Hello you multi manipulated Manx motor mechanics and thank you to Daniel Vermas for that malt mention. This Memory Maltsters is Ralphie Review 937 and um, it's a whiskey review as part of a mini series and when I say mini I do mean very mini on Scotch blended whiskey and today I'm reviewing in 2022 Johnny Walker Black Label 12 years old bottled at 40 percent hello pussycat you come to tear the place up have you here we are I'm recording a review hi Joe I'm busy do you want up people want to say hello here we go here we is Billy the cat. He's increasingly curious as he gets older and more confident. <clears throat> um, but he's quite a good cat. Occasionally he'll crash into my bottles of whiskey um, when he's chasing shadows. But he never hasn't broken any yet. So fingers crossed. Isn't that right, Billy? He's a lovely character. He's he's an old school mongrel, moggy cat. So. What do you think? Oh, you were right. Oh, well, I think you gave that. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm surprised he was sniffing it for for as long as he he has. Um, but I think it's probably being in proximity to a lot of uh, single malt whiskey has made my cats um, into catasseurs. Is that cat connoisseurs? Anyway, here we go. 12 year old, 40%, chill filtered, loads of E150 burnt sugar for colouring. This is what you get in um, a proprietary traditional Scotch blended whisky. I very rarely buy Scotch blended whisky these days. I tend to focus on single malts, primarily from independent bottlers. However, it's worth coming back as a reviewer to a blended whisky at least once a year just to give a perspective on it. Because, frankly, an awful lot of people when they discover whisky for the first time, it's a brand like Johnny Walker Black Label or perhaps Chivas Regal 12 year old or perhaps Dewar's. Uh, these widely available globally distributed Scotch brands where people actually get their first taste of Scotch whisky. And fortunately it doesn't put them off. And why should it? Because it's a first point of reference and therefore there's nothing by which you can make comparisons. Whereas if you've been drinking a variety of single malts for a number of years you most certainly can make significant comparisons and not only that but your memory banks of smell and taste are far more sophisticated and complex than they are when you first encounter and have a meeting with a Scotch whisky. So I have reviewed this before a couple of times as a brand although I have to say if, if you want to buy Johnny Walker's and you're wanting advice from a single malt drinker. What you're looking for are Johnny Walker Swing and Johnny Walker Swing Superior and also some of the older editions of Johnny Walker Green Label which used to be a really really good blended malt. So it's a, a blended whisky but it's all single malts. There's no grain whisky in it. The thing about this particular scotch a traditional scotch is that most of it is made up of mixed mash bill multi-grain distillate from column stills which are running continuously and are more, far more productively efficient in producing alcohol and to be honest you get a blander flavour and that flavour tends to be led by corn and corn is one of these grains which gives, which is recognisable, it's slightly custardy and you encounter it quite often when you're tasting uh, bourbon, the US spirit. Uh, and there's very, very close similarities 
between Scotch grain whiskey made in column stills and American bourbon. They are very, very similar. The only real difference is there's a bit less of a um, sour mash uh, polishing going on with Scotch grain whiskey, although that can happen now and again depending on the distillery. Now, most of Johnny Walker's um, grain whiskey comes from Cameron Bridge Distillery, although they do have a 50-50 ownership share of North British Distillery along with Edrington Group who own Macallan Highland Park um, and Famous Grouse. So this gives you some sort of perspective even before I start to smell and taste this whiskey. What I can tell you right now is that as a seasoned and experienced single malt drinker this is a different spirit and this is why I would never uh, mark a, a blended scotch using the same scale as a single malt. It's just not fair because the blended scotch would lose every single time because column still uh, mixed mash bill whiskey in terms of flavour and deliv delivery of flavour is inferior to single malts from a pot still. It always is without exception. Um, and I know there's people in the industry for political reasons who, who want to tell you that blended whiskies are, are you know a big pool of flavours and the, the grain whisky kind of bonds and brings together the best of the single malt and frankly that's just flannel and you should treat it as flannel because that's what it is. So as soon as we come to nosing this, and bear in mind, the last time I reviewed this, I gave a different style of review. So you might want to go back to my Ralphie review 608, which was recorded in November 2016. So we're looking about six years ago since I last touched Johnny Walker. I gave it 85 out of 100. And a previous version, an older version, I gave it 89 out of 100. But um, that's the, the, because over the last 10 years, the actual quality of single malts going into blended whisky has definitely reduced and I believe that's to do with the quality of casks. That's my personal opinion. So when we nose this, very generalised whisky notes, so you get a little bit of tannins, uh, fresh brewed tea, slightly gingery, vanilla, barley sugar, very generalised, not particularly specific and not particularly long lived in the nose. It's quite short and to the point. There's a little bit of citrus in there, or should I say lemon oil, or citrus oil, grapefruit and lemon oil. I'll stick to that. Uh, and a little bit of generalized vague spice, but it's be been covered up by something. There's a flavor in there which is dampening down the complexity of the nose. So let's have a taste and see. Sweet and sour, tannic, really quite tannic, a little bit of coarse smoke uh, which is coming most definitely from charred casks, heavily charred casks and um, the char by the way manifests itself quite unpleasantly in the beverage. It's not a nice component, it roughens up the development and simplifies it. The finish is absolutely nowhere. For a 12 year old whiskey, the finish is practically negligible. Uh, so that's it raw at 40% undilute because it's already been diluted at the bottling plant. Probably bought from about 57% down to 40%. 40 so you're looking at about a third more water added uh, the water's not added at the distillery because it's not convenient. You want to transport whis whiskey to a bottling plant as, as strong as possible so as to reduce the volume of transportation. So any, any water added will be at the bottling plant, which in this case is probably Shield Hall in Glasgow, and will come out the industrial domestic water supply. And that's fine because it's a blended scotch. This used to be sippable, but it's not made for sipping now. 
It's made as a brand experience and I'm going to come back to that shortly in my Ralphie Review 937 Extras. I really want to clarify the difference between a product and a brand. We need to know this to help get our bearings to understand and recognise quality where we find it. But I've added a drop of water to this and um, you may be thinking, hey Ralphie, you know, why I'd add any more water when the distillers have added the water for you and it's at 40%. This, the reason's simple, by reducing the strength of the alcohol just slightly, I knock off more of the flavours that it's holding, which are a lot less than it was holding when it was at cask strength. So if this whiskey was at 55 percent instead of 40 percent, it would be a different experience. It would have different flavours, but being diluted down to 40 percent, some of the complexities that you'd find in a cask strength or higher strength whiskey, they're just gone. Literally they've evaporated. They've just dissipated into the atmosphere. This is why whiskey bot bottling plants always smell nice. We're getting a little bit more space sidey whiskies. Um, light fruit, mixed fruit, fresh fruit, and a little bit of dried fruit. So if I was to kind of identify a couple of single malts, for example, that I know are in the Diageo portfolio, it would be Linkwood and Glenelgan. And it makes sense to use them in Johnny Walker because they're not very prominent as single malt whiskey sales. Not like Lagavulin, for example, and Talisker, which also belong to Diageo. More interesting in the palette now. Bit fresher, but slightly saccharine. There's a flatness over the whole experience. You can see there's whiskies in there trying to exert themselves, trying to make themselves known and show their identity. But they can't do it because, frankly, it's the, as far as I'm concerned, and it's just an opinion, that's all it is, the quality of the casks, particularly being used for the green whisky, comes across as being abysmably poor, um, really poor. Add a bit more, add more water, jeez. Um, uh, certainly as, as a single malt whiskey drinker, this is arguably the worst version of Johnny Walker Black Label I've ever reviewed uh, in my 13, coming on 14 years as a whiskey reviewer on YouTube. It's a sign of the times. Things don't stay the same. Things do change. And if you really want a good quality Johnny Walker, any of the Johnny Walkers, whether it be red or black, my recommendation is you need to go to auction. Uh, either a general auction that happens to be selling some lots of sealed alcohol, uh, or a specialist whiskey or liquor auction, or, or a wine auction would usually have them at the tail end after the wines have been bidded on. They'll have a few bottles of spirits and then could, can include your Chivas Regals and your Johnny Walker. And I can tell you right now, a generation ago, they were a far superior experience. Far, far better experience than they are now. Uh, another wee taster before I give the blend mark. There's a real heavy charcoal note and the charcoaling of casks comes from American bourbon casks primarily where they do so to help purify some slightly hot liquor coming off the stills to sanitise it a little bit and make it taste nicer by purifying the impurities. Uh, that's the reason they give, seriously. Um, the problem is that when you ch heavily char casks, it imparts a flavour into a whisky. And that flavour is one, one of burnt ash ashes. Just coarse, sour burnt ash. And I'm getting that loud and clear out of this Johnny Walker Black label. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's what it is. The thing is that when you look at the price of these now, 
And the price of a bottle of Johnny Walker Black Label in the UK is approaching £40 a bottle. I can tell you right now, you can go out and you can buy single malts, pure pot still, distilled, 100% malted barley, single malts like Isle of Arran, like Glen Cadham, and they are absolutely night and day superior to what this is. They're not chill filtered. This has been heavily chill filtered to make it look clear and pure. For cosmetic reasons, pure cosmetic reasons, you will find with these single malts they don't have burnt sugar added for colour enhancement. With this you absolutely do. You can see it glow, it looks like a tango fake tan. Look at it. Look at it. Fake tan. But it's a blend and it's being sold as a proprietary blend to customers, particularly in bars, who are blend loyal, who don't want to think too much about what Scotch whisky is because they're not, they don't have the time to make the journey or, or don't have the inclination. But this is a single malt review channel. So obviously I'm going to give you a bit a different take here than, than you're going to get in, in a review which is sponsored and marketing led in which it talks about the hills and the streams and the cascading glens and all that repeated banality. And it is, it's just nondescript banality as a, as a generalised vague point of reference. So wh what do we do with this at the end of the day? <clears throat> it used to taste a lot better as a sipper than it does now really kind of acrid, particularly the finishes, the finish is pretty awful. This is what you do. See that? It's a very rare, rare sight in this channel. A tumbler with a slice of lemon, loads of ice. There you have it. That's what you get. You go into a bar, that's what you'll get. A modest portion of alcohol, a whole load of frozen water, and a slice of generic citrus fruit just to help justify the absurdly high price that bar is charging you for selling you not a lot. There, now you know. So, a blended mark. How times have changed. 72 out of 100. It's a blended mark for Johnny Walker Black Label. There you have it. You know, um, a, a review's a review. But to help put it into context, as I said earlier, if you want to watch my next extras, which is a more generalised review, I'm going to be talking about products and brand, brands, because the product in this bottle is Scotch whisky, but in fact, that's not actually being sold. What's being sold to you is Johnny Walker. The brand is the priority, not the product. And because more and more consumers in contemporary international society are buying not products, but they're buying brands. Because to these people, the brand is the product. This is what you get. You get the inferiorization of brands for the very specific reason, the more generalized and vague and nondescript you can make the product and the point where you want to emphasize the brand, the more palatable it will become to the international array of palates and therefore it will be more accepted. I'm Ralph, I hope you've enjoyed this pop back again. I shall be discussing brands shortly and uh, products difference between them. Uh, I hope you can join, join me because in doing so, it's gonna refresh your perspective and give you a deeper understanding into knowing about whiskey. See you soon, mates. bye-bye.